Welcome to Basic Data Entry for Cultural Resources in ICMS. This course will teach you the basics of entering data in the various types of fields, attaching images, and using mass update features in the Interior Museum Collection Management Program. The basic navigation lesson is a prerequisite for this lesson. All of the information we'll cover in this course is also available in several other places. Chapter 1 of the ICMS User Manual covers system basics. Chapter 6 covers data entry. All DOI units using ICMS should already have a copy of the manual. It is also available in PDF format on the Rediscovery FTP site, ftp.rediscov.com forward slash ICMS. We strongly recommend you refer to the user manual as begin to use ICMS. Also, the online system help describes all of the program's functions. Let's get started. After login, you'll start at the home page. From the home page, you can go anywhere in the program. Some functions are available immediately from the home page. Others are available only when you're working with records in the database. One function available from anywhere in the program is System Help. It includes a chapter on data entry. The data entry chapter explains how to add and modify records and how to use all of the different types of fields. The Index tab in System Help is especially useful. If you can't remember what chapter contains the information you need, click on the Index tab and enter the subject. For example, Field Types. Now we'll learn about data entry. From the home page, you can go anywhere using the keyboard or the mouse or a combination. Navigate to the catalog records to begin. The edit menu includes functions for adding, modifying, copying, and deleting records. It also includes mass supplemental update for quickly linking catalog records with events such as loans and exhibits. Note that the function keys are also available, F9 to add a record, F10 to modify a record for example. Some of these edit functions are only available if you're in an editing mode, like undo, cut, copy, and paste, and some are available only when you have selected specific records, as with a tag or filter. Now we'll add a new record and see how the various types of fields work. It is important to be consistent with the data you enter. Click the Add button on the button bar, or choose Add from the Edit menu, or press F9. A new window opens with blank fields. The Control Property field is selected. Enter Y or N and press Tab to move to the next field, Class 1. Note how the field help changes as you move from field to field. The field help tells you what kind of data to enter in the field and how to enter it. It also tells you whether you must complete the field, meaning the field is required. Class 1 is a DOI controlled or locked authority table. It is a required field. You can only choose from specific terms which are defined in an authority table. You cannot add terms to this table, which helps make sure all records are classified using standard terms. Press F5 to see a list of terms in the authority table and select one. Once you know what terms are in the table, you can also just start to type and the term will fill in automatically. If you enter a wrong term, select a different one or press Control Delete to remove it and choose another. Now press Tab to move to the next field. Class 2 is also an authority table, and the terms in it are locked. It is a required field. It has a different field icon because the authority table is controlled by the lexicon function, which links terms together in a hierarchy. For history records, the term in the Class 2 table are categories from the revised nomenclature for museum cataloging. There is a different list of terms in Class 2 for archaeology and ethnology records. Like other authority tables, press F5 to view the list and select a term, or just start typing it if you know the term you need to enter. Press Tab to move to Class 3 and select a term there. It is a required field. Note the terms in Class 3 are subterms of the selected term in Class 2. That's how the lexicon authority table fields work. 
Object for History is a stacked authority table field. It is a required field. Press F12 to expand or zoom a stacked table field. Begin typing to open the list of terms. In this case, the list is from nomenclature, which is very large. Enter a term such as letter to find it in the list and select it. Then click Save to close the stacked table field. Catalog number is a simple text field. It is a required field. You can just enter the text right in it. Your bureau or office may have a standard catalog numbering format, which you should use consistently. We recommend you include your unit acronym. Enter the accession number. It is a required field. For many bureaus and offices, it will include your unit acronym. Now enter a location in the location field. It is a required field. It is a memo field, but you'll generally enter only a single line of text with abbreviations for building, room, shelf, box, etc. Object status is another locked authority table like class 1. It is a required field. You can press F5 to view the terms and select one, or you can simply type the text and it will autofill, fill in automatically. The status date is for the year that the object was put in a status, such as exhibit or storage. It is a required field. Item count, quantity, and storage unit work together. If you enter an item count, quantity is always empty and storage unit is always EA for each. If you enter a quantity, item count is always blank, and storage unit should be anything but EA. Chapter 2 of the ICMS User Manual explains whether to use item count or quantity. You are required to complete either item count or quantity. The numbers you enter here affect your collections management report, which counts the number of items in your collection. Description is a memo field. You can enter an unlimited amount of text in a memo field. Catalog descriptions should be brief in the telegraphic style and describe the distinguishing characteristics of the object. In the case of this letter, the author, recipient, subject, and a description of what the letter looks like would be appropriate. If you are entering a lengthy description, you can press F12 to expand the memo field into a larger window for easier editing. To move to the next page of the record, you can click the tab for Catalog or press Ctrl-N. Ctrl-N is for Next Page and Ctrl-R is for Previous Page. Ctrl-P is the DOS and Windows keyboard command for Print. Manufacture Date and Use Date are flexible date entry fields. You can simply enter a date in any of several formats, such as 10, slash 21, slash 1955, or 1910 to 1915. Or to enter more complex date ranges or partial dates, press F12 to expand the field. Here you can enter the beginning and end of the date range, using full or partial dates if that's all you know. You can also include modifiers such as circa or pre, and you can indicate the era with an AD, BC, etc. Measurements is a formatted memo. This type of field expands into several subfields, just like expanding a stackable table field or a memo field. Press F12 to expand a formatted memo field. You can enter data in any of the subfields as appropriate. The subfields and measurements are all memo fields, so you can further expand them if needed by pressing F12. In other formatted memo fields, the subfields may be simple text, authority table, etc.
Material is a user-built authority table field. You can enter any term you need in such a field. It works like any other authority field. Press F5 to view a list of terms and select one, or just start typing if you know the term is already in the list. To add your own terms to the list, press Control F5. Material is also a stacked table field, meaning you can choose multiple terms from the list. Press F12 to expand the field and select more terms that describe the material the object is made from. Press Control Delete to remove a term if you select the wrong one. Artist Maker is a repeating formatted memo. Press F12 to expand it. It contains two subfields, Artist and Role. Artist uses the Artist Maker Eminent Figure module as its authority table. In the Artist subfield, press F5 to view the list of artists, manufacturers, etc., and choose one from the list. Or just begin typing if you know the name is already in the list. Or press Control F5 to add a new name to the list. The role field is a user-built authority table for adding terms like author or illustrator that define a person's role in making the object. Because Artist Maker is a repeating formatted memo, you can add multiple artists or makers, each with their own role. Click Save and Close to save the record. If you have left empty any of the required fields, a message will tell you which fields need to be filled in. If you save the record with draft record status, it is incomplete and will not be counted in your collection management report. Click No to return to the record and add the missing information. The required fields that are empty have a red dot next to them. Fill them in and click Save and Close again to save the record. The Track Changes window opens. This window updates some of the supplemental records when you add or modify a catalog record. For newly added records, you can update the condition, location, and catalog notes supplemental. Enter the appropriate data for each supplemental and click OK to close this window and save the record. You return to the main screen showing the new record. The supplemental data you just added can be seen on the Supplemental tab of the Catalog record. Some supplemental records, such as Object Status, are updated automatically any time the key field changes. Others, such as Location, will prompt you for the reason the location changed when you save a record after changing the location. On the Images tab, you can view and attach image files to catalog records. Choose Import Image Files to select one or more image files to attach to this catalog record. You can select several at a time if needed using the Shift or Control keys while clicking. If you have many image files for a single record and all the image files are in one folder, choose Import Image Folder to attach them all at once. In the Navigator, you can easily go to any associated module. For example, go to Accessions. Here you can add a new accession record. There are different fields, but they all have field help that explains how to use them, and the field types work the same as anywhere else in the program. Let's go back to Catalog Records and learn about Mass Updates. The Mass Update functions are available on the Edit menu. To update the same fields for a group of records, use Modify All. Start by selecting the group of records you want to update. You can select them in the List pane using Shift-Click or Control-Click to select them. Or you can use Searches and Filters to find the records you want. With the records selected, 
From the Edit menu, choose Modify All Records. In this example, we'll follow the prompts to update records for all disciplines, and change the condition to Complete Excellent. When complete, note how all three records have the new condition. Another mass update tool is Global Search and Replace. This is useful for finding a word and replacing it with another. You can use it for all fields or just one field. In this example, we've noted a typo in the cataloger field on some records. Eckert should be Eckhart. Global Search and Replace will search the specified field for the specified text and replace it with the word we want. To link a group of records to an event, such as an outgoing loan, use Mass Supplemental Update. Select the supplemental type, in this example, Loans Out. Add a new Loans Out Supplemental and select a loan from the list. You can create a new loan record from this point by pressing Control F5, or you may have already created the loan record directly in the Loans Out module. The Mass Supplemental Update process links the selected catalog records to the event. The link can also be seen from the Supplemental Information tab of the Catalog Record. Finally, a very simple and handy tool for adding records that are similar to one another is Copy This Record. The Copy button on the button bar is right next to Add and Modify. Use Copy any time you have several similar records to add. After adding the first one, you can simply copy it. Change the catalog number, and any other data that is unique to this item, and save the record. That's all we have time for. Remember to use the system help and the ICMS user manual. If you need technical support for ICMS, contact Rediscovery at the phone or email shown on the help menu under About Rediscovery.